Hi, my name is Kari Mendez, and I'm a principal consultant with Red Hat. And I'm Greg Tinsley, senior consultant with Red Hat. Welcome to our whiteboarding session today. We will discuss a few tips for creating Ansible playbooks to deploy AMQ7 brokers throughout your enterprise. So AMQ7 is a full-featured, message-oriented middleware broker. On the whiteboard, we've created a diagram illustrating the various components associated with the AMQ7 deployment. So Greg, can you tell us a little bit about this deployment pattern that we see here? Sure. What we have here is a high availability configuration that consists of three different hosts. And with each host, we have a master broker configured. And each master broker has a slave pair configured on a separate host. Notice the lines going from here to here. Now, that way, if we lose a master completely, if host one goes offline, we can continue to process messages without losing any data. So how will we go about creating an Ansible playbook to accomplish this? Right, so we can begin by creating a basic base level Ansible playbook to install AMQ7. This playbook is gonna contain the following modules in order to configure our AMQ7 system. So we're gonna begin by executing the firewall D module. This is going to open up the ports on each of our hosts. These ports need to be open to allow for communication between our brokers as well as the clients that are connecting to the AMQ messaging system. Similarly, each of these modules will be run on all of the hosts that we have here. So the YUM module is going to retrieve any packages that are required from our Satellite 6 server. These include things like the Java 1.8 library and also the libAIO library for optimizing our, our synchronization with our file system for storing the messages. Next, we're going to use the user module. The user module allows us to create a non-root user so that we can run our AMQ7 services properly and securely. Once we've run the user module, we're next going to execute the get URL module. This is going to allow us to retrieve the actual AMQ7 zip file from our Nexus repository. Once we have the zip file, we're going to deploy it into all of our hosts, and then we're going to call the unarchive module. The unarchive module is going to unpackage the contents of our zip file in each host, and it has the added benefit of actually setting the permissions that are required for these pieces of software. Next, we're going to Go, go ahead and execute the file module. The file module allows us to create additional files, additional directories, and any links that are required for our installation. Finally, we're going to execute the command module. This allows us to execute the Artemis command that we've installed on all of these hosts. The Artemis command will allow us to actually create each of these brokers on our host. So Greg, now that we've got a base installation in, in place here, how can we actually configure each of these brokers on these hosts? Well, the wonderful thing about AMQ7 is that all of the configuration entries that we need are just an entry inside of a file called broker.xml. Broker.xml will, will have all of our acceptors to all of our clients, all of the different protocols that we can support. We can secure our network connections with TLS, uh, configure our message addresses, all of our queues and all of our routing types, and our HA policy for data replication. Now, Ansible has two modules that we can take advantage of, which is one is the template module, which allows us to use the Ginger 2 templating features of Ansible, and the next one is the XML uh, module. The XML module uses XPath to make entries inside of our broker XML file. Now, we can also end this playbook now by coming back to the command module and putting a command to start our brokers. So we execute this playbook, and we get this configuration deployed in our environment, just like that, this piece of cake. All right, that sounds a little bit too easy, Greg. So let me throw in a monkey wrench for you here. Okay. So suppose we've got our infrastructure up and running, everything's running perfectly, but now we decide we actually need to add some additional queues onto some of these hosts. Is there a way we could go about doing that? Yeah, sure. Remember the broker XML file that has all of our configuration entries, we just add the new queue configuration and execute our playbook once more, and boom, everybody gets a queue. Queue here, queue here, queue here, queue here. It's great. Now. Let's say that we have this playbook ironed out, everything is working perfectly in our development environment. How can we use this playbook to, uh, in all of our upper level environments from QA all the way to production? Right, that's a great question. So there are a few different tools that Ansible provides for us that we can help promote this infrastructure into different environments. So the first thing Ansible provides are variables. So any parameters that are specific to an environment can be encapsulated using variables. The next thing Ansible provides is the concept of a role. So a role is a way to basically modularize all the artifacts required to run these configurations. And then finally, we can use Ansible Tower. So Tower is a web-based system that allows us to manage our playbooks and our inventory. 
And it has a lot of other features as well that allow us to jumpstart our DevOps initiatives. So Greg, we talked about a lot of different things here. How can we get people to learn a little bit more information about some of these products and some of the processes that we've talked about here? Well, Kari, all they have to do is reach out to their Red Hat account executive, ask for a discovery session, or they can go to redhat.com slash services and look at our training and consulting services.